Mespalas Germanica, Wikipedia article audio. Mespalas Germanica, known as the medlar or common medlar, is a large shrub or small tree, and the name of the fruit of this tree. The fruit has been cultivated since Roman times, and is unusual in being available in winter, and in being eaten when bled. It is eaten raw and in a range of dishes. When the genus Mespalus is included in the genus Crataegus, the correct name for this species is Crataegus germanica cunts. Origins and related species Description and ecology Cultivation and uses In literature Chaucer Shakespeare other 16th and 17th century authors Modern literature Gallery Despite its Latin name, which means German or Germanic meddler, it is indigenous to Persia, Southwest Asia and also Southeastern Europe, especially the Black Sea coasts of Bulgaria and of modern Turkey. It may have been cultivated for as long as 3,000 years. The ancient Greek geographer Strabo refers to a mu sigma pi iota lambda omicron nu in Geographica, Book 16, Chapter 4. Until recently, Mespalus germanica was the only known species of medlar. However, in 1990, a new species was discovered in North America now named Mespalus canes sens. The loquat, Iriabotria japonica, is more distantly related than genera such as Crataegus, Amelanchier, Paraphyllum, and Malacomels, but was once thought to be closely related, and is still sometimes called the Japanese meddler. From an extensive study of literature and plant specimens, Casimir's brow is concluded that the True homeland is only in the southeastern part of the Balkan Peninsula, in Asia Minor, on the Caucasus, Crimea, northern Iran, and possibly also in Turkmenia. Mespalus germanica requires warm summers and mild winters and prefers sunny, dry locations and slightly acidic soil. Under ideal circumstances, the deciduous plant grows up to 8 meters tall. Generally, it is shorter and more shrub-like than tree-like. With a lifespan of 30-50 years, the medlar tree is rather short-lived. Its bark is grayish-brown with deep vertical cracks forming rectangular plates that tend to lift off. The leaves are dark green and elliptic, 8-15 cm long and 3-5 cm wide. The leaves are densely hairy below and turn red in autumn before falling. It is found across southern Europe where it is generally rare. It is reported to be naturalized in some woods in southeast England, but is found in few gardens. The flowers have five broadly ovate white petals. The flowers appear in late spring, are hermaphrodite, pollinated by bees, and self-fertile. The flower is 6 cm wide. The reddish-brown fruit is a pome, 2-3 cm diameter, with widespreading persistent sepals around a central pit, giving a hollow appearance to the fruit. The medlar was introduced to Greece around 700 BC, and to Rome about 200 BC. It was an important fruit plant during Roman and medieval times. By the 17th and 18th centuries, however, it had been superseded by other fruits, and is little cultivated today. M. germanica poems are one of the few fruits that become edible in winter, making it an important tree for gardeners who wish to have fruit available all year round. M. germanica plants can be grafted onto the rootstock of another species, for example the pear, quince, or hawthorn, to improve their performance in different soils. Mespalus germanica fruits are hard and acidic, 
but become edible after being softened, bled, by frost, or naturally in storage given sufficient time. Once softening begins, the skin rapidly takes on a wrinkled texture and turns dark brown, and the inside reduces to the consistency and flavor reminiscent of apple sauce. This process can confuse those new to meddlers, as a softened fruit looks as if it has spoiled. Once bled, the fruit can be eaten raw and is often eaten as a dessert, or used to make meddler jelly. They are used in meddler cheese, which is similar to lemon curd, being made with the fruit pulp, eggs, and butter. So-called meddler tea is usually not made from M. germanica but from wolfberry or gaji, which is sometimes called red meddler. Cultivars of Mespolus germanica that are grown for their fruit include Hollandia, Nottingham, and Russian, the large fruited variety Dutch, Royal, Breda Giant, and large Russian. A fruit which is rotten before it is ripe, the meddler is used figuratively in literature as a symbol of prostitution or premature destitution. For example, in the prologue to the Reeves tale, Geoffrey Chaucer's character laments his old age, comparing himself to the meddler, which he names using the slang term open arse. In William Shakespeare's Timon of Athens, Apemintus forces an apple upon Timon, the middle of humanity thou never knewest, but the extremity of both ends. When thou wast in thy guilt and perfume, they mocked thee for too much curiosity, in thy rags thou knowest none, but art despised for the contrary. There's a meddler for thee, eat it, perhaps including a pun on meddler, one who meddles in affairs, as well as on rottenness. In Measure for Measure, Lucio excuses his denial of past fornication because they would else have married me to the rotten meddler. In As You Like It, Rosalind makes a complicated pun involving grafting her interlocutor with the trees around her which bear love letters and with a meddler I'll graf it with you, and then I shall graf it with a meddler. Then it will be the earliest fruit ith country, for you'll be rotten ere you be half ripe, and that's the right virtue of the meddler. The most famous reference to meddlers, often bodlerized until modern editions accepted it, appears in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, when Mercutio laughs at Romeo's unrequited love for his mistress Rosaline. In the 16th and 17th centuries, meddlers were bodily called open arses because of the shape of the fruits, inspiring boisterous or humorously indecent puns in many Elizabethan and Jacobean plays. In Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote the eponymous hero and Sancho Panza stretch themselves out in the middle of a field and stuff themselves with acorns or meddlers. In François Rabelais' Gargantua and Pantagruel, meddlers play a role in the origin of giants, including the eponymous characters. After Cain killed Abel, the blood of the just saturated the earth causing enormous meddlers to grow. Humans who ate these meddlers grew in great proportions. Those whose bodies grew longer became giants, and were the ancestors of Gargantua and Pantagruel. Thomas Decker also draws a comparison in his play The Honest Whore, I scarce know her, for the beauty of her cheek hath, like the moon, suffered strange eclipses since I beheld it. Women are like meddlers, no sooner ripe but rotten. Another reference can be found in Thomas Middleton's essay Trick to Catch the Old One in the character of Widow Meddler, impersonated by a courtesan, hence the following pun, who? Widow Meddler? She lies open to much rumor. In the memoirs of Gluckel of Hameln, Gluckel recalls having had a craving for meddlers when she was pregnant with her son Joseph, but ignoring the desire. When the baby was born, he was sickly and too weak to be breastfed. 
remembering a superstition about the dangers of pregnant women not fulfilling their cravings, Gluckel asked for someone to fetch her some meddlers for the baby. As soon as the fruit touched the baby's lips, he ate all the pulp given to him, and was then able to be breastfed. In modern literature, some writers have mentioned this fruit. Saki uses meddlers in his short stories, which often play on the decay of Edwardian society. In The Piece of Mouse Labarden, the outwardly quiet farmstead features a meddler tree and corrosive hatred. In The Boar Pig, the titular animal, Tarquin Superbus, is the point of contact between society ladies cheating to get into the garden party of the season and a not entirely honest young schoolgirl who lures him away by strategically throwing well-blood meddlers, Come, Tarquin, dear old boy, you know you can't resist meddlers when they're rotten and squashy. D. H. Lawrence, Wineskins of Brown Morbidity, Autumnal Excrementat, an exquisite odor of leave taking. Vladimir Nabokov in Ada or Ardor briefly mentions a poet named Max Mispel, another botanical name. C.J. Sansom, in Dark Fire, refers to Meddler Orchard. The white scentless blossoms of that strange fruit, which must be left to hang on the tree until it decays. Italian novelist Giovanni Verga's naturalist narrative I Malavoglia is titled The House by the Meddler Tree in the English translation. Tree Illustration A short article with an illustration. Meddler growing on hawthorn rootstock. Bark Flower Ripe and unripe fruit. Media related to Mespalus Germanica at Wikimedia Commons.